Today we are going to be talking about handbag storage and usually this is like a boring kind of admin video I'm sure a lot of you guys out there will already have a relatively good idea of how to store handbags especially if you're in the well seasoned category of this community but today is very exciting for me personally because as you can see behind me I am revealing to you my new handbag storage system yes i've gotten so many questions in the past on previous videos about how i care for handbags how i store my handbags and although you know i've responded here and there to many of your lovely messages just to try and be helpful as i can i haven't really shared my handbag storage situation because it's a little bit all over the place so it's a little bit ghetto and i wanted it to be a certain way in my head that I could only execute if I got the ideal setup. So there's only really two goals for this video. One, just to show you my storage, because to be honest, I'm quite happy with how I styled it. And two, talk about the handbag care and storage tips that I have for you. Okay, so let's start off with some basic stats about this unit behind me. And it's gonna be really hard to see it in its entirety. It's very, very tall, so I will insert clutterways and things like that so you get a better idea and also some details in the description box if you're interested but as you can probably tell this is not your conventional you know like a walk-in wardrobe type of thing i know a lot of pressure is out there on instagram and pinterest and things like that of people with crazy handbag storage but i just wanted something a little bit less showy and something a bit more practical that i can also repurpose in the future and you can probably tell by the way that the unit is actually structured it's actually for books of which i do have some books here and dotted around but not in the way they're actually meant to be stacked and to be honest i didn't really intend to go for a bookshelf by design really i was actually going around a lot of places in person and online doing a lot of research around shelving i was kind of fed up of having it in my wardrobes my integrated wardrobes and i went to to places like Ikea, obviously, a lot of people buy their storage from there. In fact, I even have one of their um, kind of rectangle units. You know, the ones with all the little square cutouts, you know the ones, you can get them in like a two by four or a three by three or whatever. They did have their own kind of more, more wardrobe style storage systems, but I didn't want to buy a whole new set of wardrobes. There's no need for that. Personally, for me, I wanted something a little bit more interesting looking because the IKEA ones are a bit cheap and basic, to be honest. I'm just gonna call it spade a spade and something that could actually be then repurposed in the future. Some of that presented the bags in an interesting way and wasn't super, super saturated by the likes of Instagram and Pinterest people anyway. But then we actually decided to walk a little bit further along within Ikea because as you know Ikea is a labyrinth and you have to kind of walk through the whole bloody thing and I think it's maybe the living room area um, of Ikea and they had really nice white bookshelves I'm going with a white theme because white is very very clean crisp goes with anything and to be honest white you can always repaint it it's already got the base coat on I stumbled upon the bookshelves um, area in Ikea and was looking at all of the white bookshelves and thinking, oh, actually, these bookshelves are big enough to store handbags in them. Now, they were all made out of this weird fiber wood, or like, it's basically made out of paper or wood chips, which I find so strange, clever, because it's strong, but also it's very cheap and it's not durable. And these things, I guess, are for people who move into like, I don't know, dorms and universities and things and then chuck it away and it's not a big expense. But for me, I wanted something that would last, something I could even pass down, you know, generation to generations. And that wasn't gonna be something that I was gonna find at Ikea. I then did a bit more research online and I went on a website called Wayfair. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of it. No, this is not a sponsored ad or anything like that. I wish, to be honest, because this shelf was expensive. I bought from Wayfair before, their customer service is really good. The item actually came, I believe, from Indonesia and it was pre-assembled as well. None, none of that stuff that you get from Ikea where you have to sit on the floor for hours sweating while you figure out what order the instructions go in. This is um, two separate units which stack on top of each other they do have brackets for things that you can fasten so it doesn't fall off and also it means it's flexible when you're moving it to have it in two bits it's also handcrafted in mahogany wood so it's not those paper wood chips from ikea and that obviously is reflected in the price but it was also reflected in the fact that when it came to me oh my goodness the packages were humongous and actually the boxes were really really scuffed and as soon as i opened it i actually noticed because i think of the length of time it took to ship and how heavy it is and whatnot how it's been traveled around the world 
um, there was like a crack in it or whatever, but Wayfair was really good. They compensated me for the crack. I fixed it. Just be careful with items that are really big and bulky. And if you can go and visit um, other places, shops near you, just to get a sense of size and scale. I had no idea this was gonna be as big as I thought it was when just reading the measurements. You always get a better feel for things when you're actually in the physical presence of the item that you're gonna buy. And another reason why I really liked the bookshelf concept was because of the different ways that you could store your items and use the space. So obviously you've got the shelving areas, which are great for the actual handbags themselves and packaging and things like that. You could start up really nicely, of course. The bottom also opens up options with the drawers and the cabinets. I've got my jewelry here with all the boxes. I've done them in a nice little Tetris. And in this one here, I've just got some packaging for, you know, belts and things like that. And I've also got my other bags below in the little cabinets. They're magnetized as well, which is really, really great. And that's, I think, just the spiel about the actual shelf itself. Uh, in terms of the inspiration, I will move to the side so that you can actually see the shelves in a bit more detail. Um, no real crazy inspo here. I actually had no preconceived ideas of what this was actually going to look like. So actually I'm pretty impressed with how it turned out. The thing that I did have in my mind actively though is because I have a lot of neutrals, obviously it was gonna be a more neutral kind of wardrobe setup, but I wanted to go from kind of light to dark and each one has a kind of little color story within it, which I've tried to stick as close as possible to with the limited items that I have. And something that was also really important when I was styling these particular shelves, I didn't want it to just be handbags. I wanted it to be more like curated, like I mentioned, a bit more museum vibes and also a bit more of a reflection of my personality. I feel like I'm speaking to a work of art, but it's really not that significant. Now we'll move into part two of this video, which is all about handbag storage and care. And this is just stuff that I've learned from over the years. And if you have any other tips, please do leave them in the comments below if you think I've missed anything really, really important. So I've actually got three categories of tips that I wanna share with you. The first one is just general storage of the items, like how you can see behind me. So the first one I think is going to be really obvious, but it might not be for some, or at least it wasn't for me when I started my handbag collection anyway, especially if it's a bit lower end, um, but it's to store your handbags on a flat surface. Now, before you cut me in the comments, you're like, Mel, <laughs> you just stop speaking the obvious. I actually think a lot of people store their bags in other creative ways that they think is space saving and things like that, but in the long term will warp your bag, damage your bag. But some people like to hook their bags, for example, on pegs, other coat hooks, or, or sometimes they make ones out of, you know, normal hangers and you can put little, I think it's like shower curtain rail, little loops and l hook your bags onto those. Those are fine. Obviously, if you're going for the supermarket trolley bag, that's totally fine. But when you're going up in the price brackets, hanging them is not a good idea. Warps bag, etc. So where you can, I would say just obviously, if, if you can afford it, get dedicated space, having them squished together, bunched up, touching each other, in a very enclosed space is not a great idea, especially if it's prone to getting a lot of heat or a lot of sunlight. You know, that is all gonna increase the probability of damage for your bag. So if you can get some sort of unit like this, or even little cubbies that you can buy, little, you know, trays where you could put your bags onto there and have them equally spaced out, equidistant to each other, not touching, that's the preferred option, because to be honest, if you can't and they're all squished together, well, I would even question, if I'm being really truthful and blunt here, why you even have expensive handbags. Even just an interim solution, which puts your bags on a flat surface, separated from each other, that would be ideal. Don't hang your bags. Please don't hang your expensive bags. And the next tip that I have for you guys is around keeping your bag away from direct sunlight. Again, something that should be obvious, but I think, you know, if you're buying an exciting new wardrobe or storage solution like I have, it can be very easy to forget that nature is gonna work against you and the direction of your living space or which direction you're actually facing your unit, especially if it's an open unit like mine is, it doesn't have actual 
wardrobe, doors, that's gonna be something that could really mean your bags being bleached. For me, actually, I am very fortunate. I live, first of all, I live in the UK, where, let's be honest, there is no sun most of the year. In fact, I think summer's over at the time of speaking, which is a bit sad, because I think we had like one week or two weeks maximum. I don't know if you want to call it a blessing or a curse, but that's the situation in the UK. We don't get that much sun, but when we do get sun, we're obviously very unprepared for it. And Take note of the direction your house is facing. That will obviously have an impact, sunrise, sunset. Like don't have your shelves facing opposite a window. Obviously because it will bleach your bags, which I've seen happen on other people gradually over time. It won't happen overnight, obviously. But also for a safety aspect, because this is something that I don't think a lot of people talk about when it comes to handbag care. There is gonna be no handbag to care for if it gets stolen, because if it's going to be near the sun and in windows, it's likely gonna be near like a main road or somewhere visible to the outside world. Don't give people the temptation, okay? So that is a tip that I think people may overlook, but it's a very important one for that double pronged purpose. So for me, this particular unit is not facing any windows. There are windows nearby, but the sun doesn't hit the bags directly in fact not even a lot of sun comes through this way so we are all good and also i have blinds which i can very easily toggle on and off which is also something that can help if you have no real up other options now another tip that is also along the same safety and security point that i made earlier is that during your usual days obviously when you're at home or whatever that you are obviously having your bag stored in this nice, beautiful way. If you are going for longer trips away, abroad, please make sure that you put them away or store them elsewhere or have somebody come and house set for you. Again, I don't think it's something that people stress when it comes to handbag care, but it's all great. Your house looks like a lovely museum. A heightened sense of security would not go amiss. And you know, you can have security measures that are other than just physical or you know the security cameras you could also have it in terms of insurance and these are things i've covered in separate videos around safety and security just the general truth of buying luxury so you can check those out and then the last tip that i have around the storage category is around what to do with the actual packaging so i'm talking about the paper bags i'm talking about the boxes i do my best to regularly purge such packaging that i do not need for items that i know i definitely won't sell um, but for other boxes which are a bit more essential what i will do is to save space because those actually took up a significant portion of my wardrobe which is why i was finding it kind of difficult to store my bags then appropriately in that space was that i nested all my boxes and then by nesting those bags in the future they may come in handy if you're moving and you need extra boxes or just store other knickknacks or even to use them as decoration like i have here or even to rest your items on specifically clutch bags i think this mcqueen alexander mcqueen clutch that i have doesn't really stand nicely on its own but with the box on on the bottom here obviously really adds the aesthetics of the gray shelf here but it also means that it stands nicely or you can also have them lean on a box as well and that looks also quite nice now moving on to category number two which is dust bags now you might be thinking mel none of your handbags behind you are in dust bags i mean these ones i'll probably keep out for a little bit longer because like i mentioned i don't really have sunlight it's already that hot in the uk so i can really get away with it but trust me in the cabinets below the other handbags that didn't quite make the cut for this shelving display are all in their dust bags and when you are then storing your handbags in their dust bags if you are going to be storing them inside an integrated wardrobe solution, obviously make sure that they come out to breathe every now and then because it is usually leather that your handbags are made of. So obviously that is like literal like skin, isn't it? So it's something that needs to go out and you know get a little bit of oxygen because otherwise you might get uh, sticking, cracking, peeling, those kind of things over time. Now the next tip that I have for you guys is around storing metal chains in dust bags. So obviously it's a given that you're probably gonna put your handbag in its allocated dust bag. But obviously there are usually metal chains, as you can see behind me, there's a lot of metal woven chains and they can tarnish your bag actually, if or even indent them uh, if you keep them on there for exposed periods of time. So what I like to do is wrap tissue paper around the straps or tuck these straps into the bag. So for example, this Chanel Mini that I have here, you can see I've just pushed the chains within the holes here and I will usually have them 
inside with a bit of tissue paper as well, just to protect the leather of the bag to make sure it does not indent. Similarly then for bags like the Chanel boy bag that I have here, you've got a leather bit on, on the bag as well as the metal chain. This is a patent leather bag as well, and that's an even more delicate fabric. I've talked about it in the past actually with this particular bag. Um, but what you can do, is I've seen other people do it, is you could put, for example, the metal underneath the bag or resting on the leather and you can have it sit on there. Um, or you can also wrap the chain as well. And then another dust bag related tip is when you are packing your bags, like I showed you with the Chanel Mini earlier, always make sure to stuff the inside of your bag just to retain its shape. And also if you are putting your chain in there, then at least it rests on the tissue paper or air paper, whatever you have, old clothes, you know, you can use anything like that. Just make sure obviously there's no like risk of color transfer or anything. Um, but then it also helps protect against the metal on there so that there is no color transfer, rubbing, tarnishing. Now with the majority of my bags, I have stuffed them with air paper just from Orders that I've made online, they give a lot of air paper. I find that's the best way to do it. Obviously it's inexpensive because I'd ordered other stuff anyway. You can also use tissue paper, like I mentioned, but you can also use handbag organizers as well. And so for example, this particular bag, this is my Louis Vuitton Keepall 45. You've got some different types of air paper because some of it has deflated. So might need to be topped up every now and then. So obviously do a routine check of your bags. But also I have a little bag organizer in here, my Samorga bag organizer. I've got in this beautiful blue, blueberry color, I believe it is. And that keeps the shape of my bag even better as well. So we've got double protection. And now we're onto the final category, which is just general daily care. And the first tip that I have is around, I guess, just the cleaning of your actual handbags after use. And this one I think can be quite, depends on who you are. Some people will recommend certain lotions and potions, but for me personally, when it comes to caring for my bags, which a lot of people ask questions about how I keep them in, I guess people think they're in good condition, so I, I must take that as a compliment. I'll take what I can get. When I've had those questions, I've always responded by saying, I put no lotions or anything on my bags. I don't spray them with anything. I know people talk about leather protection and things like that. The most I will do is a bit of water and cloth, or a very gentle baby wipe on certain problem areas because all the leathers are different. I personally just don't want to risk the one time it takes for a chemical to react funny with a particular bag or a particular metal and it just over time tarnishes, wears the bag down. And obviously then you can't really go and fix the bag because it was your damn fault that you put that foreign substance on it. Obviously there are things that you can do about like pen marks and stuff like that, you can use rubbers and things. Those are fine, but when it comes to actually spraying things on your bags, the best protection I guess is to get something, and this is I guess segueing nicely into my next tip in this category, is to get like a weather jacket or to bring like another bag. For example, this kind of portable little bag that I have and it's in a cute strawberry. Some of you OGs will know of this bag. It is like a little shopping bag. Obviously you can use it then for that double purpose of carrying your groceries if you have an impromptu shopping trip or if it rains, you can put your handbag in one of these and it also has that security element as well so that you can, if you're in a bit of a dodgy place, which I don't know why you'd bring your handbag to a dodgy place, but you never know. You can then also put your bag in here and no one will be any the wiser that you have a very expensive bag on your person. Some bags do come with raincoats. Obviously I'm talking more like the Hermes and I think some Fendi bags, even Bulgari now, they do really um, cute little raincoats. I think you can even probably buy them externally as well. I'd recommend that as opposed to then spraying anything foreign on your handbags. Then in terms of just more maintenance itself, on the daily, I will usually, especially now I've got this new unit, I'll just come down, give her a little admire while I'm having my morning coffee. Obviously I keep that coffee well away from the shelf. We all know how that will go down, but obviously I'll do a little checkup. Prevention is the best form of protection. So if you spot something early, you'll probably be able to fix it earlier as well. And also it just means that I constantly am reminded of what bags are in my possession in my rotations that I'm using and that means I can give them more, a bit more love. And then just as a final tip to finish off, again, something that's probably stating the obvious, but after each use that you have, 
come rain or shine just make sure when you come back home you give it a quick wipe down whether that's with you know your actual handbag mitt which i'd also suggest you use for that specific bag if your bag company so chanel obviously gives you a handbag mitt not every brand does but give it a wipe down if you need to put a bit of water or whatever to get some little mark out or whatever do that as you need and then obviously just make sure it's super dry don't make anything too too damp when you're wiping it and then as a general tip just make sure that you are wise with how you are wearing your bag so obviously if you've just bought brand new jeans I wouldn't recommend bringing out a pale or white colored bag. Be aware of what you are wearing your items with, the, the kind of weather circumstances that you are working with on that particular day as well, just the type of event that you're going to, if there's a risk of spillages and things like that. If you're going a night out, probably wouldn't recommend bringing your most expensive handbag. Hopefully it's not overstating the obvious, but even in my time as a handbag lover, I've made those crucial mistakes before. And thankfully I've had bags which have been durable enough to withstand it. But once I see those marks, I quickly on the day that it's happened, or as soon as I notice it, I will make sure to wipe it as best as I can so that it doesn't actually embed. Anyway, so that was all of my rambling aside. Those are my tips, tricks, and just a general tour of my new handbag shelving solution. And if you've got any other tips, like I mentioned before, please do leave them down below. I'd love to know as well if I've missed anything or if there's just other creative ways to make the most out of your space. So with that in mind, I'm going to end this video right here. Thank you as usual for watching and I'll catch you in my next one.